My name is Roderick Stewart. I'm a volcano seismologist at the Montserrat Volcano Observatory, which is affiliated with the Seismic Research Centre at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad. Seismology is the study of earthquakes and the waves that are generated by them. This includes sort of natural studies of earthquakes, the inside of the earth, but seismology is also used by, for instance, oil companies to study the waves that pass through rocks so they can work out where the oil is. Earthquakes are very important in the monitoring the study of volcanoes. The, um, whatever's happening underneath the ground creates pressure changes, and these generate very small earthquakes. Sometimes we call them micro-earthquakes. They're not large enough to be felt, but with our instruments we can detect them and we can locate them. And because they are reflecting pressure underneath the volcano, it means we can actually track pressure changes, and this may be related to magma movements, rock faults opening, things like that. So it really gives us a view of what's happening underneath the volcano, which is very important in trying to foresee what's going to happen. Yes, and this is the key so actually monitoring a volcano is studying the different types. Now they all have different sort of physical mechanisms behind them and you might even get scientists arguing about the different types. But basically we have things called VT earthquakes which are volcano tectonic which are like the earthquakes we see around the world. We then have things called long period earthquakes which are more associated with magma moving the VT earthquakes are associated with cracking going on. The long period, the A, are associated with magma moving. We have another type called hybrid, which are also associated with magma moving. And then we have things like tremor, which is a continuous seismic signal, which usually means the system is pressurizing. We even get signals from things like rock falls. You have a dome at the surface, there's rocks cascading down, that gives us a seismic signal. And so by identifying all these types and basically counting how many of them occur, we can sort of see what state the volcano is in. If there's lots of rock falls, it means dome growth is going on. If there's VTs and they're deep, it means there's something bubbling up. If there's shallow VTs, it will mean maybe something's going to happen soon. And when we see the LPs, the long periods, or especially the tremor, that really means that some sort of eruption is imminent if it's not started already. So the actual identification of these different types, counting how many of the occur, and, and we're talking lots of them. Um, VTs, we can get thousands in a day because they're very, very small, but they're very important. So that, that's the cornerstone of the type of monitoring that we do is identifying and counting the events. We do it using computers. Um, computers now do <laughs> underpin everything in science, but we have a number of sensors around the volcano called seismometers, which basically measure ground motion and they can pick up signals caused by earthquakes, but also by animals walking by, trees blowing in the wind, lots of things like that. So we have a number of sensors around the volcano, at least five or six, but here in Montserrat, I think we've got 10. And by recording data from those sensors at the same time, we can identify which the earthquakes are. So the data all basically comes back to one central point, into a computer and then we have some automatic processing that 
picks out what we call events. But we also have manual processing where an experienced technician or seismologist looks at the data to maybe do the, the event identification. But basically there's a lot of data coming in to our computers, which we record and store and then analyze. That is a really good question because in theory, I guess, in theory we can. And there are some parts of the world where that's the only way to work. Say the Aleutian Islands, which are going from Alaska over to Russia. No one lives there, no one does anything there, but we've got seismometers and the people monitor them from their, their home office. But when you've got a, a critical situation, you're monitoring a, a, a very active volcano, you, working remotely is, is not optimal. First of all, the internet isn't 100% efficient. It goes out from time to time, and you don't want that going out when you've got crucial data coming in. But also, it's important to be with scientists who are measuring other things, to have the, the computers at the volcano observatory. So I perhaps think I'm seeing signals that are from rock falls. I can get confirmation from the geologists who can give me the times that they saw rock falls that day. It also means that my feedback can get quicker to the, to the scientists. I, I've noticed at volcano observatories that I've worked at, all the scientists develop the habit of looking at the seismic data before they go out or asking about it when they're out in the field because it's like a safety mechanism it's our view on what's going on and to do that properly you cannot do it from a distance and i'll give a, a, an example we recently were involved in monitoring the eruption in st vincent and the first thing was to get the seismometers in place to do the measuring and whilst that was being done the computer side was being done both from Trinidad and from Montserrat but once all the seismometers were in place the step after that was to move the computers to the observatory at Belmont and St Vincent so we could do the monitoring.